tired of fuzzy composite video or dreadful RF quality? Today we'll take a look at the Ultima Atari video upgrade board for the 8-bit Atari consoles and computers. What is happening guys? Todd here. Back in the 1980s, Atari computers and consoles were known for a couple things. Number one, cool games. Number two, terrible video quality. Whilst all these machines had RF output, some of them had composite, and a few of them even had S-Video. However, regardless of what video output used on any of these machines, they were plagued with numerous problems with video quality. They had poor grounding and terrible voltage regulation, along with some really questionable design choices from Atari. Atari was much like Commodore back in the 80s, they cut corners anywhere they could, and usually video quality was not high on the list of things to keep. However, along comes the Atari Ultimate Video Board from a forum member named Brian over at the Atari Age Forums. This is actually the second revision of this board, and this whole hog replaces the built-in video system on any of these Atari machines, whether you're looking at 2600, 5200, um, 7800, all the Atari 8-bit computers, uh, the Atari 8-bit game system, um, all these machines, everything but pretty much the links. This little board replaces the video system on all of them. Let's take a look at the hardware itself. You can purchase the UAV in three different configurations. First is a fully assembled plug-in board, which costs about $25. This one's completely assembled with all the pin headers and the green terminal strip. Also includes a socket for your motherboard if needed, and some wire for the install. This one is designed to plug into the spot where the 4050 hex buffer is on Atari computers. Next is a basic board. This one is missing all the pin headers so you can do a custom install depending on your needs. You can purchase this one for $22. Finally is a kit version. Essentially this is the basic board with all the components to make it a plug-in board. You can then solder on what you need to complete the install. This one also runs $25. In all three configurations, all the tiny service mount components are already soldered in place. You just pick the configuration that best suits the machine you're adding it into. Let's take a closer look at the plug-in board. The blue potentiometer is for adjusting chroma to luminous sync. This is already factory set and shouldn't need adjusting. To the right of it is a green terminal strip. This is for running wires to the composite and S-video outputs along with a few other necessary hookup points. We'll cover that later on. Down below this, you'll see a set of jumpers. Moving these around will determine which console or computer this can be installed into. I have them currently set for the Atari 800XL or XE computers. This diagram from Atari Age tells you how they should be set depending on which machine. Towards the bottom there's a 5 volt and ground solder points for custom installs. However, these won't be necessary for today's install. Finally on the bottom is a header pin to plug it into the motherboard of the Atari computers if there's a socket installed. Since Brian includes the socket, you can desolder the 4050 if it's not socketed and then plug the board straight into it. Let's get to installing this. Today I'll be installing this into my Atari 800XL computer. Since this machine is fully socketed, I won't need to desolder the 4050 chip. However, depending on your machine, you might need to. The tools I'll be using are a soldering iron, some solder, some wire cutters and wire strippers, and finally some Phillips and small flathead screwdrivers. Okay, let's get this 800XL computer opened up. First start by removing the six screws in the bottom of the case, flip it back over and carefully lift the top off. Unplug the keyboard ribbon cable on the right hand side. Normally the 800 xl has a metal RF shield in it. I've removed mine in the past at some point. You'll need to remove yours to do the install, however you can reinstall the RF shield once you're done if you so desire. This here is the 4050 hex chip that you'll need to remove. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit closer where you can see where we'll be working. Since my 4050 is socketed, I can just pop it right out. Let me point out a couple places we'll need to solder to. Here's the point where we'll solder the color signal wire to. Next is the ground point. The ends of all these resistors are tied to ground so it's a good point to use. Then there are these two beads. We'll clip them, lift them up, and solder the luma signal to the left one and the composite video to the right one. Let's go ahead and start by using our flush cutters to clip the rear of each of these and lift them straight up to get them out of the way. Next we'll need to add some solder to the points we clipped them from. Next we tin this point for the color video signal. Finally we add some solder to the end of one of these resistors for our ground signal. Now we need to prepare the wires. I decided to use a 5 conductor ribbon instead of the wires that Brian supplied. I plugged the black wire into the ground connection, the white into composite video, gray into luma, purple into chroma, and the blue one into the color signal connection. Once the wires are all plugged in, tighten down the screws to hold them into place. Back in the Atari, we solder the black wire to the ground point that we tend. The blue wire goes to the color point. Now we can plug the UAV into the socket. 
Next I solder the gray wire to Luma and the white wire to composite video. Finally I attach the purple wire to the unused chroma pin on the back side of the 5 pin DIN socket. And this completes the install in my 800XL. It should be mentioned that you don't need to use a stock video monitor port that your Atari computer might have. You can feel free to add any ports to the machine you want. If you want to add a S video socket and a composite video socket, you can feel free to do that. I just feel more comfortable leaving the machine looking as stock as possible from outside and just reusing the existing ports. Before we take a look at the improved video quality, let's look at the stock composite video on the Atari 800XL. This is from the menu of the Uno flash cart. Now the composite video from the UAV board. The picture is noticeably sharper with less interference. Also, it's brighter too. And finally, the UAV S video I put. This is even sharper and cleaner with virtually no dot crawl. This was just a couple quick samples of the video quality difference the UAV makes. For more details about installing this board into different machines, check the threads I've linked down in the video description. Well guys, as you can see, this tiny little UAV board makes an enormous difference in the video quality on the Atari 8-bit computers. It also does the same thing for the console, so if you're using a 2600, 5200, or 7800, you can also get great quality out of those machines. So you can install this tiny little board and get stellar composite and absolutely outstanding S video of these machines. So if you're used to using your old Atari computer or console, and you're used to using the old original compositor, God help the RF, this thing makes a tremendous difference and I highly recommend it. Well guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and leave a comment. I'm interested in knowing what you think about the UAV. Is this something you'd be interested in, or are you okay with the original RF and composite on your machine? I'd like to know. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next video.